Similar case would be if we have hydro, if we have peroxide. If we have a peroxide like this and negative charge on this oxygen, then this, this peroxide is going to be a better base or it will even act as a nucleophile, which hydroxide ion generally will not. In this case, we are, we are having similar, similar situation. This oxygen is having a negative charge. Adjacent to this, we have another oxygen having lone pair and there's a repulsion. So this is going to act as a nucleophile. And these two Kriege intermediate are going to react with each other and this oxygen is going to attack this carbon. When it does that, this pi bond is going to break and go into the, the electron of this pi bond is going to go into the orbital of this oxygen. So let's see what happens. There's a bond formation between this oxygen and this carbon and this oxygen is going to have a negative charge. So let's draw that. How will that look like? Fine. I have just shown this oxygen, this carbon bonded. There will be no negative charge bonded. And I have broken this bond and shown a negative charge on this oxygen. That's it. Now, what we can do is we can stabilize the system further. If I break this bond in such a way that oxygen electron is shifted towards oxygen, then oxygen will become neutral. And this carbon will start to have a plus charge polarity. And this C plus and this O minus can again form a bond. Fine. So, what the final rearrange structure will look like is this. I've just broken this bond and form a bond between carbon and oxygen and drawn it a little properly to show it like this. This is called trioxalane. Now, trioxalane is better than Kriege intermediate because it's neutral. Now, uh, trioxalane will not be the final product. It can't be because still you have a peroxide linkage. And from here, the motivation to go further would be to generate C double bond O. As I have told you before, C double bond O is the strongest organic double bond of organic chemistry. Now, there are a few important points that derives the mechanism of a reaction in particular direction. It derives towards formation of aromaticity. It derives towards formation of C double bond O. In acyclic, we look for C double bond O. In cyclic ring, we look for aromaticity. Because these two are important, powerful factors which bring stability in the molecule. So that's the motivation here. And we'll try and generate C double bond O. Now, this oxygen, again, as I have told you before, will act as a base. And this can abstract hydrogen even from water. So if we have water in the system, this oxygen will go into the orbital of hydrogen so that this lone pair turns into a bond pair and repulsion is minimized. So when that happens, hydrogen will break a bond, puts the electron of this bond into the orbital of oxygen. So from here, OH- is going to come out and this hydrogen is going to be bonded with oxygen. So let me show that here itself. When this process is complete, there's a bond between oxygen and hydrogen. OH- is going to come out. And this oxygen is going to gain a plus charge because it has given its electron into the orbital of hydrogen. Fine. Let me rub this off. Now, what's next? What next can happen? Now, su suppose I have to generate C double bond O, then I have to break certain bonds and form certain bonds. I can see carbon oxygen. So my attempt would be to form a bond between this carbon and this oxygen. Now, how, how I can do that? Now, I have to pull some electron, push some electron into certain orbitals. That pulling and pushing starts from electron rich end or electron deficient end. So, this oxygen is electron deficient here because this is forming plus charge. So, this oxygen is going to pull electron. From this side, you have oxygen. Electronegativity value is same. So, pulling won't be powerful. So, this oxygen will pull from this side because here we have carbon. So, electron is going to shift towards oxygen and is going to cleave this bond. So in that process, this oxygen is going to be neutralized. Now, if I am going to push the electron of this oxygen into the orbital of this carbon, then there will be a bond formation between this carbon and this oxygen, C double bond O, as I thought earlier. So when that happens, this carbon have to break a bond because it's forming one new bond. It has to break one previous bond because octet cannot expand. So when carbon breaks the bond, this oxygen is going to gain a negative charge. 
And remember what charge this carbon is gaining? This oxygen is pulling electron. So this carbon is gaining plus charge polarity. After whole of the electron has been pulled, a plus one unit of charge will appear on this carbon and a plus one unit of charge will appear on this oxygen. And they will do, guess what? Form a bond. So from this part, what we are going to get is R C H double bond O, O C. So this aldehyde is going to appear. From this half, we are going to get R C. This bond has been broken, double bond O, and this bond is going to be there, O H. And there will be a plus charge on this oxygen because it is giving its electron. This is what we are going to get. And there is a hydroxide outside formed because of abstraction of hydrogen from water. Fine. Charge is conserved plus minus plus minus. Now this is one of the product of ozonolysis that we get one half we have got already and one half is going to come from here. Now here what will happen this hydroxide and this OH plus are going to form a bond with each other. So this OH minus and OH plus will come from here. So they are going to form H2O2. OH, OH will form a bond H2O2 and if OH plus have to go then oxygen will leave its electron into the orbital of this oxygen and this oxygen will become neutral. So another aldehyde is going to come from here and this is H2O2. So these, the, these are the two final aldehyde that we write very easily just by breaking this alkene from here. RC double bond OH from this side, RC double bond OH from this side. But this is how it comes finally, RC double bond OH, RC double bond OH. These are the two final product of alkene that we can get just by breaking this alkene into two halves and giving C double bond, double bond O to each of the carbon making that pi bond. So, but this is the overall mechanism and apart from that, you also get H2O2. Now the question is, why we added zinc? Why did we write ozone and zinc? Because this zinc, this is an oxidizing agent. Hydrogen peroxide is a good oxidizing agent. Now this hydrogen peroxide is going to act, oxidize these aldehydes. And these aldehydes are going to be turned into carboxylic acids. In order to avoid that, we add a strong reducing agent. So this re zinc reduces hydrogen peroxide and they react among each other and this aldehyde shows no more reaction. No further reaction on this aldehyde. There is a, will be a reaction between this oxidizing agent and strong reducing agent. The so zinc is added in order to reduce this oxidizing agent produced in the reaction to spare the aldehyde from being converted into carboxylic acid. If we want carboxylic acid as the final product, we will not add zinc and allow these aldehydes to be oxidized. If we want aldehyde as the final product, we will add zinc to protect them from further oxidation. That's the purpose. That's why when we add zinc, we call it reductive ozonolysis. When we don't add zinc, we call it oxidative ozonolysis because finally, this hydrogen peroxide is going to oxidize our aldehyde that we have got as a final product. Fine. So this is ozonolysis for you. So you have understood ozonolysis. Now let's go and solve some problem. 